In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what I would do if I had to study web development from the beginning in 2021. And I'm going to start from the absolute beginner and I'm going to talk about some essential tools that you need to learn, the programming languages and the frameworks and libraries that you need to know in order to get a front end and a full stack developer job. And I'm also going to talk about which project at which point you can do to practice a skill. And you can find everything under learn.devchallenges.io. So if you're ready, let's get started. Assume that you are a beginner. There are a few tools that you need to know before getting into programming. First, we have Visual Studio Code, which is a source code editor. It is free and powerful too. In the beginning, I recommend you learn some of the basic shortcuts and install some of the extensions like ESLink, PTO, or Live Server. Next, you need to know about command line, what it is, and some of the basic commands like how to move around the directories, how to create new directories, and how to create new files. And no matter what you do as a developer, you need to know about Git. Git is a version control system used for tracking changes. It is usually used with GitHub, which is a code hosting platform. In the beginning, learning Git might be overwhelming. Therefore, you just need to know uh, some of the basics, like how to create a new repository, how to clone a project, how to make a new commit, or how to update and get new changes. One of the best ways to practice Git is by working in a team, where you need to know how to create a new branch, how to make pull requests, and how to resolve conflict. And the last tool is Figma. Figma is a designing tool, but I want to talk about using Figma as developers. As developers, we need to know how to read Figma design, like how to get the color, typography, and spacing. All right, these are two that you need to know when getting started, and you don't need to know everything, but be sure that you understand the basic so that you can improve while learning to code. Next, and let's continue with programming languages. And let's start by talking about responsive website. I don't think I need to mention how important it is to build a responsive website as there are so many devices at the moment. So let's jump to the two languages that you need to know in order to build a website, HTML and CSS. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is used for building skeleton for your website. HTML is not difficult to learn, but you might want to pay more attention to HTML forms as it will be the fundamental in the future. And we also have CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet. This is also a markup language, but I also consider it as a programming language. CSS is not difficult to learn, but it is difficult to master, and there are few topics that you want to pay more attention to, like box model, how margin padding border work together, CSS unit, what are the unit in CSS, and position which confuses so many people, so make sure that you spend time on it. In CSS, we also have variables, which is my favorite thing in CSS. It makes working with CSS so enjoyable, and you can create theme which had few lines of code. And when talking about responsive website, we cannot forget about media query, which decide what to show on different screen sizes. And lastly, we have animation. If you know how to use animation correctly, it will make your site stand out. Otherwise, it will make your website look unprofessional. So be careful. When you know the basic about HTML and CSS, the next step is to build basic website. For example, homepage, forms like login page, checkout page, you can even build a portfolio. And you also need to know how to deploy your site. Nowadays, it's super easy, and you can use tools like GitHub page or Netlify or Vercel. All right, the next topic is JavaScript. JavaScript is a popular programming language. You will need to learn some of the basic like data type, loops, conditions, and then there are topics that you want to dive deeper into. First, we have debugging. This is a process of finding and fixing errors. Then other topics like object, primitives, and array. Especially when working with array, you need to know about array method as well. 
Functions are the main building blocks in your program, so make sure that you don't overlook them. Like C Sharp, Java, or other programming languages, in modern JavaScript, we also have classes. These are useful when it comes to object-oriented programming. One of my favorite features in JavaScript is destructuring. It is easy to write and it is super powerful. And no matter how good you are with programming, you will have errors in your script. Therefore, you want to know about error handling as well. Asynchronous programming is important, especially when you need to communicate with the server. So spend some time learning about promise, async, and away. Let's move on to how JavaScript is used in browser. First, you need to know what is document object model or DOM is. And then you need to know how to get element, how to change classes, or how to get the styles in JavaScript. You also need to learn about different user interface events like click, mouse over, or mouse down. And you also want to pay more attention to forms in JavaScript as it has many events and properties. Other important topics are Fetch API, how we can send network requests to the server. This is useful, for example, when we need to submit a form or get user information. Another important topic is storing data in the browser. In here, you need to know what are the differences between cookies, local storage, other less important topics when you are just getting started, or regular expression, which are used for search and replace text, and web component, which is a new thing, but totally should check it out in 2021. Lastly, we have WebSocket. It is useful when it requires continuous data exchange for example, in chat application. So after learning about JavaScript, you might want to spend some time learning about TypeScript. I love TypeScript as it gives me a safe feeling. It also saves time as it finds the bugs before the code runs. And you can stop here and start working on some projects. But personally, I would continue by learning some framework and then practice JavaScript at the same time. All right, so let's move on. To become a front-end developer or full-stack developer, you need to know some of the libraries and framework. So let's start off with SAS. SAS is a preprocessor scripting language. I use SAS in almost every one of my projects. It makes CSS look cleaner and faster to develop. Next, we have NPM, which is a packet manager for JavaScript programming. This allows you to install different packages quickly. And one of my regrets is not to know about Contentful sooner. Contentful is Headless Content Management System, or CMS. Different from traditional CMS, you can store data in Contentful and use it in your website. And to get a front-end job, you need to know at least one front-end framework. I personally would to React, and let's talk about other framework later. Besides learning the basic about React, you also want to pay attention to how state is managed in React application and how form work in React. And another regret that I had was not to know about Next.js sooner. Next.js is used for server-side rendering or generating static website. And yes, Next.js is still quite new, but I do believe that this is a skill that a React developer must have. And after learning about React, you also want to take a look at Material UI, which is a React component library, or Tailwind CSS, which is a CSS framework that helps you speed up. So with JavaScript and the framework, now you need to practice and practice by building projects. You can start by building some simple reusable component to understand how React works, and then build more complex application like quiz app or to-do app. After that, you want to build even more difficult application like job search, blocks, document page, and you can find the example projects on devchallenges.io. Now you are ready to apply for a front-end developer job, and if you want to continue to become a full-stack developer, you can start by learning Node.js and Express. Here, you need to know how to build RESTful API, and you can use MongoDB when working with database which is quite simple to learn when you already know JavaScript. After that, if you want to learn more, you can look into GraphQL, which is a data query and a language for APIs. I personally also will spend some time learning about PostgreSQL. 
Comparing to MongoDB, it's a bit more difficult to learn as you need to learn about SQL as well. Alright, so after learning these two, you can practice by building applications like Image Uploader, Authentication, or Chat Room. And again, you can find these projects on devtenters.io. And now you're ready to apply to a full stack position. If your job requires Vue.js, Angular, or even Svelte, then you can spend more time learning it. It should not be too difficult once you already know React. So that concludes the roadmap. You can find more on learn.devgenesis.il. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And one of my goals in 2021 is to create videos about every topic that we just talked about. So if you haven't yet, check out learn.devgenesis.io. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And otherwise, happy coding and see you in the next video.